Hello folks and you're watching Tech Tech Shula. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. In last video, we have seen that what a machine learning engineering role is and why you should become one. You can find a link for that video in the right corner. From this video onward, we will see how to become a machine learning engineer and what different things one must be aware or be expert of. We hope that you will like this video. In case you do find this video informative, please help us grow the channel by liking this video and subscribing to our channel and also sharing the video with your peers. So let's get started. Last video was to understand that why machine learning today is so crucial. In this video, we dive a little bit deeper to understand the machine learning workflow. Yes, just like before starting software development, we should first make ourselves aware of the software development lifecycle. It is equally important to understand that what is the end to end machine learning workflow and how machine learning gets applied in today's corporate world. The goal of any machine learning project is to build a statistical model by using collected data after applying a bunch of machine learning algorithms on them. That is why every machine learning project consists of three different stages. First is data engineering, where we collect a bunch of data and prepare it for the model. Second is the machine learning model engineering. This is where we train the mammal model by giving it data from the first stage. And the last one is model deployment, where we integrate the trained ML model into the product or the tool chain. Let's try and understand them one by one. Also, here in this picture, we can see the entire picture of the machine learning workflow from gathering the data to cleaning it, then to train our ML model. And in the end, once we have the trained ML model to apply it in our product or the tool chain. As we all know that to make a robust ML model, we need a lot of data. And data can be in any form. It can be structured, semi-structured, or unstructured. In data engineering, we typically aggregate the data from various input sources and in various input formats. A typical data engineering pipeline consists of five steps. First is data ingestion, where we collect data by using various frameworks and formats such as Spark, HDFS, CSV, etc. This step may also include some synthetic data generation or enrichment. Second is the exploration and validation, which includes data profiling. Here we are adding metadata to the data, for example, max, min, or average. Validation helps us in defining the correctness of the data and finding errors in the data if there are any. The third stage is data wrangling, also known as data cleaning. Here we are reformatting particular attributes and correcting any errors in the data that we have found in the validation step. Fourth is data labeling. Once we have collected data and also cleaned it, we classify our data correctly and assign them different categories through labels. And the last one is data splitting. In this step, we've split the data into training, validation, and test data sets to be used during the core machine learning stages that will come later in the ML model workflow. Although data engineering is an intermediary step, but this is the most expensive in terms of resources and time. Any error in this step will lead to further errors in the final trained ML model. So we need to do our due diligence to make sure that the data is prepared correctly through data engineering. Now let's look at the next stage of ML workflow, which is ML model engineering. In this stage, we code and execute various machine learning algorithms to obtain a ML model. A typical ML model engineering pipeline consists of four steps. First is model training. This step is where we train the model after applying machine learning algorithms on the training data set. It also includes feature engineering and hyperparameter tuning, which will go deep in a separate video. Second is the model evaluation. Once we have a trained ML model, we validate its correctness by running it against a validation data set. This is similar to our third step, which is model testing. Here we provide a larger testing data set. The purpose of model testing is to perform the final model acceptance test by using the whole backtest data set. And the last one is model packaging. Once we have a final trained model and ready to deploy, we export this final output into a specific format, which is PMML, PFA, or ONNX. This is similar to the way the softwares are packaged like .exe for Microsoft or .dpkg for Linux. Now, finally, let's look at the last stage of ML workflow, which is the ML model deployment. In this stage, we take the trained ML model from the last stage 
and deploy it as part of our business application. This integration step requires a feature vector as input to the ML model to generate some prediction. For example, which news feed to show to a particular user on social media or which user to match to someone on a dating platform. This is where the culmination of the entire ML workflow happens. A model deployment stage consists of three steps. First is model serving. This is where you are tasked to place a ML model in a production environment where it can serve traffic at scale. Second is model performance monitoring. Once we have started querying our ML model, we want to generate some metrics around this performance. We want to see how good or worse the predictions or recommendations are from the model on live and unseen data. These signals and metrics will help us to retrain the model down the line. Third is model performance logging. This is similar to the previous step where we were generating metrics to monitor the performance of the ML model. Additionally, we should also log the performance of the ML model with every inference request. Now, as we have learned the three concepts up till now, let's look at how we can employ the entire machine learning workflow with AWS SageMaker. In machine learning, you teach a computer to make predictions or inferences on your behalf. First, you use an algorithm and example data to train a model. Then you integrate your model into your application to generate inferences in real time and at scale. In a production environment, a model typically runs from millions of example data items and produces inferences in hundreds to less than 20 milliseconds. So for this first phase, we generate enormous amount of example or training data. The type of data that you need depends on the business problem that you want to solve right now. For example, suppose that you want to create a model to predict a number given an input image of a handwritten digit. To train such a model, you need example images of handwritten numbers. Now to prepare the mo data, your model for training, you can use Jupyter Notebook in SageMaker like this. Once you are satisfied with the quality of your training data, you can feed it to an algorithm. SageMaker offers a turn of out of box algorithm solution for you to use. This will be helpful for someone to get up and running with little knowledge. You also need compute resources to run the algorithms on. Depending on your use case, you can choose from the cheapest available EC2 instance to a full blown distributed GPU cluster. Next up is evaluating your train model. You can again do this by using Jupyter Notebook in SageMaker by sending requests to the model for inferences. You might need to use AWS SDK for Python or the high level Python library that SageMaker provides. Now, after all that effort, time is to deploy the model. Traditionally, the model needs to be re-engineered before we integrate with our application. But SageMaker also provides hosting services, which we can use to deploy our model independently while decoupling it from our application code. And with that, we want to wrap this video. We hope that you learned a little bit about ML workflow, but we are just scratching the surface here. In our next video, we will do a hands-on AWS SageMaker session that will help to put together the pieces in this in the puzzle. We will also show the practical side of all these concepts that we learned today. So please be sure to subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon. And as you may have seen that in the past, we released a lot of system design content we have compiled all that knowledge in an ebook format that you folks can use for your system design interview preparation. Please find the link for that in the description. And let us know in the comments that if you need or want anything else that will help you in preparation for your system design interview. Please also share the videos with your peers who are interested in a, starting a career in machine learning. And in case you want to show us some appreciation for our work, you can support us with small donations as we are a small team of engineers working full time and striving to bring quality content to you. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one.